Ta-da! Welcome from the other side. I preferred to work on the other side first instead of my normal routine, how I go around the car. Here I prefer to do the same things that I've done on the passenger side, to do them here on the driver's side. Driver's side in Canada, not in UK. And then eventually we're gonna go back to the rear valance and to the bonnet and the windshield frame. These are gonna be projects on their own. I got this car in my previous garage just before I broke my leg. So that was like nine months ago. <laughs> so nine months ago I got this car. At that time we did a walk around and everything, but I forgot. I, I couldn't remember whether this side was better than the other side or not. So now that we have it around, I looked through it and I can't, I can't tell if it is better or not because there's some good news and some bad news. For example, good news is that this wheel arch is actually salvageable. We don't need to, to replace the whole wheel arch. Also, the inner wheel well here is in a good shape. We're going to confirm that. We're going to remove the wheel and we're going to um, needle scale everything to make sure that that's correct. But as far as I can feel by touch, it is all good, the wheel well and the wheel arch. So we only need to work on this area here at the end, which we have, we have another wheel arch for here, so we might cut just part of it to replace here. We will see what we're gonna do. Here also, this whole entire piece on the other side was gone. Here we only have a problem with the bottom. It's dented, of course. Even, <laughs> even the repair panel was dented <laughs> so we will see if we're going to replace probably we're going to replace the whole piece here or just part of it we have it here at the end of course this will need to be replaced it's the same situation as on the other side so that we know and of course this fender will need to be replaced because of the wheel arch here we have a new fender so we're going to replace that as well the door the situation with the door bottom is the same. It's been replaced with another door bottom, which is not in a bad condition, but it hasn't been positioned well. I can see the line here and everything. So we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna make a new bottom, or we're gonna see if we can use this one. But we're gonna work only on the bottom of this door because here it's not rotten like the other side. There's a little bit here, which might turn into a can of worms, but we'll see. And here on the outside as well, it's not too bad. The bad news is inside. <laughs> okay, so this is the bad news that I'm talking about. I don't know how well you can see from there, but you see the inner bottom of the A post, I guess it's called. It's totally gone from here to the front. We will just have to replace it, right? We're going to have to make our own because we don't have that and I don't plan to order it because I think it's going to be pretty easy to make. But on the other side, at least the top was still there. there was, we just made the side here, but we worked from the outside, so probably you... that's why it doesn't look familiar to you. The bottom of the A post, the inner seal are in a bad shape again. And here at the back, we have the same problems. The floor looks better here. We might be able actually to save it or just replace this, a strip at the end. This too, the front of the floor, this side of it is pretty good. I'm going to change your angle later and you're going to see. This uh, cross member, again, the same thing in this part here is pretty much okay. Here it is bad, but again, like on the other side, we're gonna have to repair that. But again, we're gonna slice it, we're gonna remove it, and we'll see how, how much of the floor we can keep, because I believe we can keep a lot, a big part of the floor here. Here we have the wiring harness, and it looks like somebody's been here, because a green wire with a red stripe, we're gonna have to see what wire that is. It's been cut and this end has been stripped, so looks like somebody powered up something from here at the back. I don't know what it is, but anyways, we're gonna unplug the harness from here and we're gonna pull it out. And here we have, again, 
most of the floor is missing, but on this side it goes even higher. On the other side it was only to here somewhere, to the corner. Here it went above, but again, that's not a big deal. We're gonna replace it. But we will see, it might actually be easier to replace the whole piece here. We can make our own, as we've already seen that. It's much cheaper making our own and replacing it than buying a new floor pan. Here, actually, I'm afraid that we have a bigger problem because I haven't noticed that before, but it looks like they haven't changed the whole seal here. They changed only parts of it. Oh, that's too bad. But let's let me show you what I mean. So as you can see here, we have rivets here. So it looks like they, the new seal that they got to replace, they didn't use all of it. They sliced it and they only used parts of it. Look, this overlapping metal here somehow. This metal is overlapping the other metal. There's overlapping metal here. Oh, I never noticed that before. So I know where I'm going first. <laughs> first, let's take this seal out and see how many pieces it is made of and whether they are usable or not, because we might need to order new seal. Or at least join these pieces in a better way than just overlapping them. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let me start taking the seal out. You know what guys, do you think what I think? I think this is a homemade seal, which is rotten already. Yep, I don't think that's original because why would they slice it here to bend it? It's too bad though because we're gonna have to buy a new one. This is like way too rotten here in the bottom. Here actually I'm surprised how the floor remains in one piece. We're gonna probably need to replace part of it, but Anyways, let's keep taking apart. So, <laughs> so it is a homemade seal, which is interesting. Huh. Can we make it too? Like they made it out of three parts. These two parts that which are pretty straightforward. And I'm pretty sure this can be made as one part. And then they made this one, which is again, if you have the right templates, which is not hard to make. You can just make this shape, make the profile first from here all the way to down there. So put the template here inside, bend this flange, put a template here inside. This is a little bit more complicated because it's curved this way and it's curved this way. This one at least is straight this way. But again, it's, it can be made like a buck out of wood, bend down and that's it. And then you're gonna have one part, two parts that you have to weld together. Maybe it can be made even as one part. I don't know. I think it's $225 American in most motors. By the time it comes here with the conversion, it's gonna be probably, I don't know, 400 Canadian. We will see. Now here, underneath the floor, there's again reinforcement pieces that are riveted. I just ground the rivets and let's see if it is gonna come out, this front one. <laughs> oh. 
I'm gonna have to go un under the car and and grind rivets. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm gonna stop for today because I got tired. Finished the previous video today, and I and then I started this one. So, so I think I'm gonna stop here for today, and tomorrow I'm gonna go underneath and grind more. All right, so it's the next day and I'm sitting here and thinking about the game plan. We need to have a game plan here and I can't think of one. <laughs> Without the seal, it is really complicated. I wanted to take out the shells, like to take out the seal, to take out this panel, to take out this panel, cut out the rotten part of the, of the wheel arch and then with the new panels, put them in place and make sure they fit with door and everything. Only the shell outside, you know what I mean? And then I was gonna mount them with clicos and stuff to have position for them and then take them out and uh, start working on the rust inside. But every time I make new panel for inside, I can fit it with the shells that I know are gonna be in the right position. Now, when I don't have the seal, that's really tricky. I need the seal so I can work on the parts inside based on my seal. For example, where the floor is gonna need to end, needs to be based on my outer seal. In this case, I'm thinking that I should keep this structure here, even though it's rotten and it's gonna be replaced later. It is rotten, but it's not that rotten. It's still solid and it and keeps the shape of the door jam more or less. So, we can start working on the floor. Now this floor here is too far gone up there. We knew that we were gonna have to replace this part of the floor, which we've already done on the other side. We know how to do it. But on the other side, this vertical part was still in a pretty good shape here. This part also needs to be repaired. and. And there, we only repaired the corner on the other side, you see? But here, even this is, this requires attention. I just need those scaled it. Looks like this corner here is solid, which is good because it's hard to make. So I'm thinking if we repair this first, we're gonna cut the bulkhead a little bit higher because that's also gone. So we're gonna see where the solid metal starts. We're gonna cut it away. Well, there's a seal end cap here that we're gonna remove and it's gonna open a little bit more room here. We're gonna assess this part here. We will see how far the rust goes and we're gonna re repair this, I guess. So from top all the way to the corner, maybe even if we can make the corner in this panel so we can have a flat piece for the floor to weld after. So we're gonna repair something like that all the way to here. The corner, like we said, is good. And then from here, again, we're gonna make sure that we have solid metal, but we're gonna cut it as low as possible. And, <laughs> I don't know, it looks like it's not gonna be very low. Maybe we should cut it just under the corner here and repair to the bottom, make also the bend so we can have a flat floor to mount later. This is gonna be the complicated area because it has multiple curves, but it is what it is. We're gonna remove also the rotten part of the cross member. I'm gonna cut it here somewhere. And uh, once this is repaired, then we know how to make our floor and we're gonna rely on the current position of the seal, of the inner seal and the strengthener piece and everything to position the flange of the floor because you see the floor has a drop here at the end and once we do the front floor then I'm gonna be more comfortable we're gonna be able to remove the rear floor here is it's in a good shape only the corner here the drop is is bad so we're gonna have to repair only that but again we can keep the seal in place to give us the position of the floor drop and everything repair the floor and once the floor is done then we're gonna be able to remove the inner seal and the strengthener piece and repair these and in the meantime we might get a seal i don't know 
we haven't decided yet whether we're gonna buy a new one or we're gonna make one or we're gonna work with what we have there. We're gonna have to repair this area as well before we can mount any seal. So even if we have the new seal, this will have to be repaired here or at least clean up. Well, maybe that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna clean up this area first and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I cleaned this up a little bit, not much. I still have to clean more. Remove this uh, end cap from here, the seal. And um, you know, the idea is to open here as big space as possible so I can cut the floor and start repairing that. But I decided also that from inside, here I won't be able to access everything because of the pedals. So I'm gonna remove the pedals and to remove them, I'm gonna have to remove this repair panel from here, you know? <laughs> I was resisting the urge so far to pull this, but now I'm gonna have to pull it because the, it's co it covers one of the bolts for the pedals here. So I wanted to, I don't know, I didn't wanna look at it yet, but looks like I'm gonna have to. <laughs> repair panel, eh? I don't know how far it goes. looks like I need two hands here so it's not too bad <laughs> just a little bit Pedals are out as well. I'm gonna leave the master cylinders here for now. They're not on our way. Okay, I started cutting here the bulkhead and I wanted to cut this corner off like before on the other side so we can see if this bracket needs to be repaired as well or we just need to repair the shell. But I can't remove this bolt. I removed the nut from underneath and this out trigger is actually pretty mangled I just realized so it's gonna need tension but that's gonna happen when we take the frame off but uh, it looks like the frame needs some work too but in general it's in good shape anyways my point is that I can't remove the bolt from there I removed the nut but the bolt is rusted inside the tube in the frame and I rounded the head and it won't go, so now I'm gonna weld this nut there. Now, after three nuts and one bolt welded to the bolt, I was finally able to snap it. Well, it's hot, but yeah, the nuts, I just couldn't weld them properly. They always snapped, so finally I welded this bolt to the head of the other bolt, and it snapped. So not the best option, but we have to repair this out trigger anyways, and whatever. So let me keep, keep cutting here now. I'm gonna cut this corner off and we'll see if we can repair it off the car, like on the other side, and then we'll be back. <laughs> bracket actually looks solid okay all right so before we ruin this piece completely let's try and copy it like we we've done this before so I'm not gonna go into way too many details I hope but knowing me I'm not really sure <laughs> I'm gonna try to make them round bends Please, I'm gonna bend it by hand. See, pretty round.
pretty much the same bit. Okay. narrow Ugh, too narrow we're gonna straight so we're gonna do it again now if we had an English wheel we could have used it to straighten it actually but we don't. Do we? Well, maybe we do. Don't tell anyone. that we have an English wheel. <laughs> Good. So now, now the only thing that we need to do is learn how to use it. <laughs> All right, so now we have to terminate it some, somewhere here. But first let's cut it flat. Alright, when I did the floor for the other side, for the passenger side, I made the ribs the same way and I had to make the end flat for the floor to have a drop down, etc, etc. And one of you guys, Hazen, Hazen W, hi Hazen, so he actually made a demonstration video on his YouTube channel, I might put a link to it here, uh, showed me how to actually shrink this and I don't need to cut and weld, but I think for for more channels, because the ones on the floor, they are shallower than this one. This one is deep and I need to make a piece that fits inside here, then clamp, it, clamp everything and obviously hammer this down. But I think this is way too deep and uh, it's way too much trouble to do it this way. I think my way, where I'm, which I'm going to show you right now, is much faster and that's what we're looking for here. And uh, so, I'm sorry Hazen, I'm still gonna do it the same way I did it before. And now for this curve, we can make actually a template directly on the table. <laughs> so it needs to be a little bit lower actually here. So actually pretty good now we have to make flanges here on this side so let's mark oh, okay. we'll get rid of this here okay.
and that's where our hoe is gonna end up. So here we need to cut a V. That went too far. Oh no. Oh. Now this has a drop here on this side and then it raises again on the extension because again this is for water to drain down but I don't think there's gonna be water there, so I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna drop down just to raise it up again on the other side because we're gonna have to make another one of these to extend the floor this way. So we're just gonna use it as it is. We marked our hole, so now we can get rid of this metal here and clean our bracket and use it again. Alright, so I cleaned this up and there were a few little holes here and there and there was a bigger hole here actually, which I welded. I put a round, uh, like a pit, I put a little circle out of sheet metal and there were like pits here that I welded, that I welded here, here, here and here. And that's gonna be it. Now I'm gonna rust convert it and we're gonna paint it and then we can put our uh, floor on it and put it in the car that's gonna be the first part on this side yeah. all right so these are painted i painted the back of this where they're gonna overlap and they have to be spot welded and, and while i'm waiting for them to dry i cleaned here a little bit to make sure that this corner here is solid so i don't need to do anything about it this is where the rust starts from so we're gonna make a piece for here here i didn't think about it i should have made my piece longer and re replace everything up to here but it's fine i'm gonna so this is where my piece ends i just marked it and i need to cut this away anyways because i have more rust here on the bulkhead and so we're gonna cut this and I think I'm gonna cut it like this and like this and we're gonna make a separate patch for here and then we're gonna start coming this way in the meantime though I need to straighten this I need to straighten the outrigger on the frame because I need to get rid of this bolt here and empty the hole because I need to match this hole I need to match this hole I need to drill a hole here and I need to match it with the hole on the frame so let me straighten the outrigger as far as I can and we're gonna go from there <laughs> Okay. All right, I drilled the hole here and now we can line them up. which also makes these flanges line up with this end here, perfect. And now we can do some hot welding here. Okay. Okay, so I trimmed a little bit more in that area. And now this thing here, <coughs> 
goes like this. We can put the bolt in. So that's its position and it matches well here with the old floor, with the old patch. So now we just have to trim it to match here. And I also made this patch that is gonna go something like this, but it needs to be trimmed as well. But it matches here, this side matches the curve on this, on this side it matches this curve. Let me show you how. If I take this out, so I can position this underneath and mark this line and cut it and and then we can weld it. Okay, it's welded. I'm not gonna grind it now. And I think now instead of working this way, I think I'm gonna rebuild this part first because this part is hard. Like it's not hard, but it's a complicated shape. And I'd like to make this part first so I can match this part to this part. Because if I make this part first, which is pretty straightforward, then I'm gonna have to match this part to that part. And this is already complicated part. So let's build this first. And it looks like it is complicated, but it's not because that's what it is. On this side, you can see it. It's uh, like a triangle which has a flange that way and a flange this way. That's all, and a little bit of bend at the end. So let me try and make that first. Well, we're gonna make that and a lot more, but we're gonna leave that for the next video because this one is a way too long video already. I didn't expect that, so I didn't record an ending for it, but I'm recording it now. So as usual, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon and PayPal even though you don't gain any other benefits with that because i don't have benefits here you know i don't want to take anything away from the people who don't want to become patrons or they just simply can't afford it so to those of you who are already patrons thank you people thanks for doing it anyways without any benefits and to those of you who are not patreon for whatever reason i still thank you for being here for commenting for subscribing and for sharing my content this is uh, also a help so I, it is highly appreciated but if you wish to become a patron you can go to the description of this video and follow the link there to my patreon page and you will see the instructions how to become a patron or if you want to make a one-time donation you can do so by sending a paypal transfer to my email which is elin.yakov at trustybeauties.com uh, on that email you can send also e-transfers if you're in canada uh, and that's also going to help me stay on track and keep making the videos that I make. So if you feel like saying thank you for that, uh, this is the way. I thank you for being here, for watching, for commenting, for subscribing and for supporting me financially. And I'll say goodbye and I'll see you in the next one. You see, we made a lot more progress. I just need to edit and upload. So stay tuned. It's coming soon. Bye.